Moonshine Horsepower, Moonshine Harley Davidson, bike build number 17, chrome fatty. Check these things out. Whew. These things are impressive. They are super shiny, very well done. It's got a really thick dart and sleeves in them. And we'll show you how we start out and what they look like before we send them to the polisher. And our polisher is on the money. I mean, these fins, there's no ripples in them. They're perfectly straight. We're very lucky. We hope he never retires because they don't build them like that no more. So most of our bikes are always a performance bagger. This is gonna be your highway cruiser and it's not gonna be as aggressive setup on the suspension. This is more set up for the owner of this bike, him and his wife for touring. So there's a little different features I'm gonna go over. The power plant of this bike is a Moonshine Horsepower 135 cubic inch M8 Devil Runner. And it is all polished. So full polish, we have the CNC MHP Game Changer cylinders that are show polished along with a set of Moonshine Horsepower Monster Heads that are show polished. Very cool setup. It is definitely a showy bike. We don't always do them all polished with chrome on them. This bike is kind of what Harley was when I got introduced to Harley and it was polished SNS motors, polished cylinders, polished carburetors. So putting the polished stuff back on the Harleys is kind of going full circle back to when I came into the industry and started riding these machines. So got a polished MHP 70 mil monster intake manifold on this bike. When we go to 135 cubic inch or larger engine, we go to the monster heads and the monster manifold. We need more volume entering the motor. So to get more volume with the stock bolts, we went to that square port that allows these guys to breathe better. So bolted to the 70 millimeter intake manifold is a 70 millimeter throttle body. And to finish it all off, we like this air cleaner. Um, it's easy on the wallet. It flows really good. SNS has spent a lot of time. The backing plate is an injection molded plastic, so it doesn't heat up the same as aluminum would. And it, it makes great numbers on the dyno. It runs good on the road, easy to get. This is their stealth air cleaner setup. And we are running the optional plus one. So if you buy an SNS stealth air cleaner, which we have on our shop.moonshineharley.com, along with a lot of these other parts, is you have to buy the stealth air cleaner then you have to buy the optional one inch wider filter setup that comes with the extensions in the filter. And this is just a real clean old school SNS round chrome cover to dress her up. The teardrop covers you see a lot. We do a lot of the carbon fiber teardrops. And the reason the teardrop works well is the air hits the intake right here and it, it has turbulence and the low spot of air is back here. So it sucks all the air in back here. And that's why the teardrop is on the back side of the air cleaner. Most people think most of your air is entering here. It's actually not. Most of the air entering your intake is through the back side of the filter and those teardrops work really, really well. Now on this front end kit, we are running a pair of SMT wheels, ink, and these are what they call their big fatties. They're awesome, lots of chrome, matching rotors. They have a matching pulley for the rear. Really cool setup. We're gonna show the dyno graph towards the end and when you go with a rim choice, if you go with a real beefy, heavy wheel, it does sacrifice power to the ground. But if you want a really trick bike that looks really good, you want horsepower, you're not worried about winning a race, even though you still can sometimes. If you want all the max power out, it's a little more critical to figure out what wheel you want to put on your bike and you want to go with something real heavy. If you're going more for look, um, you want the bike to really stand out and you want something different, then go with any rim you want. These rims, they're not breaking, that's for sure. <laughs> so the fender, the wraparound fender looks nice. Um, we had to paint that fender to match on this bike. It, it's just a great, it blends into the front end. It blends into the tire. And what's nice about the Pirelli Night Dragon tires is it's the same tire on the front of the bike as the rear. The only difference is when you mount it on the front of one of these fat tire kits, you are changing the direction of the tread and you're gonna run it backwards. And that tire was designed for this bike and this setup. They kept that in mind when they came out with that tire, make sure it worked both ways. Of course, you can't get around that huge chrome thunder header on this bike. It's one of the best sounding 
M8 exhaust systems on the market for a built high performance or any built motor. Even if you're doing a cam or one of these, it's an awesome system. If you're running a stock motor, it's a lot of exhaust for a stock motor. But the Thunder header, if you're running our MHP 45 cam, perfect. If you're running something bigger, it's just an awesome sounding exhaust. Now, no, it's not gonna be the quietest. So make sure you want a little bark on it. We'll have a sound clip here at the end of the video. Um, it's everyone's favorite part of the video is how the bike sounds. Now that we went over the cylinders and the heads and the intake on this bike, we are running a Ward Performance 550 cam. And a lot of guys, when you say 550 compared to like a 570, a 580, 590, they're like, oh, it's a small cam. Well, it's not the biggest lift, but it's got a ton of duration on it. This cam closes at 48 degrees and we make 170 plus horsepower over and over on these Moonshine Horsepower 135s. Uh, this one is down on horsepower a little bit because we got that real heavy wheel we talked about at the beginning of this video. So at the end of this video, we'll show you the, the graph. We'll show you what this bike did, which it was 162 horsepower, but with a stock wheel, we always get 170, 170 plus. So we'll show you the two graphs. We'll put them on top of each other and show you how a heavy rear wheel really affects the performance of your motorcycle. Now, this customer set this bike up for touring. So a seat we run a lot is a Saddleman seat. They have become super popular because they do such a great job with the look of the seat, the comfort. This is the road sofa. And since it's gonna be the over the road tour, he has a wife on the back. So instead of doing a really trick aggressive shock or an Olin's, we went with a shock from Wilbur's that is actually a self-correcting shock for weight. So when you get a Wilbur shock, you set it up for the rider weight and the passenger weight, and it will actually self-level when you put the passenger on. And then when it feels the lighter weight, it automatically revalves, and it's set up just for the rider weight. But they're right here. Wilbur's, I don't want to take the bag off because he's got speakers in it. But that is your Wilbur's rear suspension. So if you're a two-up rider and you're, you, you know, 50-50, you as the rider, 50-50%, you got a passenger on the back, you might want to look at a pair of Wilbur's. They are really cool. Um, it's newer technology to the market of Harleys. They've been out for about three years now here in the US, and it's a nice plus shock. It's not your real aggressive performance bagger shock, but if you're over the road touring, awesome option to look at. And of course, if you're gonna be touring with a passenger, you need your backrest, so Saddleman's really got it set up where they make a backrest for this, which we'll show you here in a minute. And you can get a road sofa, which is, this is your extended reach. You could tell because we're farther back. Saddleman makes the road sofa in the stock location and then the extended, and there's a difference between how far you're sitting. So if you are buying a road sofa Saddleman, uh, sit on both of them and see what feels right for you. I like to sit farther forward. A lot of guys like to sit farther back on them. And then Saddleman goes one step further. They have these seats set up where they have their backrest built into it and you can buy them with no backrest. The bar setup though, we still love the Krauss Moto bar setup. This one is the Moonshine Horsepower Wolf One Kit. So it's in collaboration with us in Krauss Moto. It's got our gauge design where we wanted the gauges set up so we can see full visibility of the gauges on a road glide and still be able to see the entire screen on your infotainment center. So on this, customer chose to go with the Krauss Moto perch clamps. It, it's nice, they're light, um, they're a little bit more out of the way there, which you never really have a problem with stock ones, but on some of the road glides, you have that big bulky piece that comes here that covers the bar. So you have two options. You can go with Krauss's setup with their smaller ones, or you can always buy the perch clamp from a street glide right from your Harley Davidson dealership to get rid of that big weight they put on the road glides. Um, this setup is running stock cable. So it's a stock clutch cable from Harley and it's the stock brake cable. This is a total kit of 12.5 inches. So this is a 10 inch kickback with a two and a half inch rise bar, which gives us a total of 12 and a half inches. So if you're on our site looking at them, I am 5'11", sitting on the bike. I mean, the bars are underneath my shoulders. This is what I run on my bike. I don't wanna be higher. I wanna have more control. Being a little bit under my shoulders is easier. It's less fatigue when I'm riding, I'm doing long haul. So this is a performance bagger setup, but even cruising, getting your arms 
and your hands, your elbows a little bent under your shoulders, make it where your wrists aren't these crazy angles is gonna help for the longer ride and not get fatigue in your wrist or anywhere else. We also like to go with the performance machine grips with the rent all rubbers on them because they're a little bit more narrow. If you're cruising and it's cold out and you have gloves on, gloves make the handlebars thicker. So you're holding on like this. So if you have a thinner grip, even with the glove on, you, you're, your hand's sitting nice. I've noticed on some bikes when you have too big of a grip, you will actually get fatigued here in your thumb and it'll start to hurt and you gotta take your gloves off riding. The gloves are there for a reason. They protect you from the elements. They're also to protect you from the ground. The gauges, at my height, I can fully see both gauges. I can fully see my infotainment center, and that's the biggest thing for us. So when we were designing this with Krauss, that was very important. Now, if you want these for your bikes, we don't really do this for a street glide because your gauges are in the fairing. And if you want to run the solid gauge mount, you have to have a kickback riser. If you're going to be running straight, these guys will be pointed at the sky. They'll be no good. So if you want this set up, um, you have different riser heights. You can go 14 and a half. You can do a 12 inch total kit. You can do a 10 inch total kit. And they're great for a road glide if you have one. I recommend it. It's exactly what I ride on my bike. It's what we install most on the road glides. And to finish this guy off, to have a dialed in front end that's fully tunable, we went with a pair of GP front cartridge kits. Right here, real important to us, made in the USA. You have preload on both forks. so. It's gonna be this guy you're gonna to turn to do preload. Whatever you do on your right side, you're gonna do on your left. Then you have compression on one fork, which is the middle screw, rebound on the other fork too. So full adjustability. This guy, we are putting the lock right here from Krauss. It is a second key. That's the only disadvantage when you run this. If you have the Krauss optional lock kit, you have to run a second key. We haven't figured out how to get it exactly key to your Harley key. Working on it, maybe later down the road, we'll have that out. And of course, in that whole Wolf One kit, you get a Wolf One top triple tree. And what that does is it just, when you're taking the shroud off and the cover that Harley has your factory gauges in, you don't want that piece to be shown because Harley didn't design the top triple tree to be seen. It's a big piece of cast, it's just painted, it doesn't look the best. So when you take the cover off that houses your gauges and everything, putting the top triple tree on really dresses it up. The Wolf One Pro Kit comes with that, or if you go with the MHP, which is the Moonshine Horsepower Solid Gauge Mount Wolf One, you get the gauges set up like this, which is actually your top clamp. If you need to adjust your bar with this setup, there's screws on the back of this guy. You have to take off to take your cover off. Your gauges, you can lay down, then you access all eight screws to adjust your bars. It takes a little bit longer because there's three additional screws, but to be able to have your gauges visible, your screen visible, your fuel, your volts, um, it's nice. And all your turn signals and everything, they're closer to you, they're more in your eye level. When I'm riding, my eyesight, I wanna keep them gauges up, gauges up. I don't wanna have to be dropping my eyes way down here. So it's actually, in my eyes, a safer setup because my eyes are moving half the distance down instead of farther down to see maybe what gear I'm in, see the RPMs I'm running, see if my cruise control set still. Anything I need to do is right there. Um, really nice. And then Rockform. Rockform makes these really, really slick uh, phone covers and holders. That one is a polish because this one is a fully decked out polished bike. Everything's got to look good. So he went with the polished mount. The back of your phone case, you have a little guy. I haven't had my mom on the bike in a couple of days, so I get my magnet on there. I remove this from Rockform, snap it back on my iPhone. There's a magnet here, you got that. It's a twist, it locks on, plus it's got a magnet. That phone's not going anywhere, so you have it right in your handlebar. Once again, if you're riding, some guys are trying to pull their phone out of their pocket and look at it, not safe. It's real easy just to look at your phone, see what's going on. You want to switch songs. You can operate everything through your hand controls depending on what operating system you're using. Me, I usually don't go through the infotainment system. I go straight from the cell phone to my Senna headset and I rock a full face. Everyone's different, but this is a really nice phone mount. We have them in stock. You can always call the shop. We can get it set up for your phone and get them. It's our preferred phone mount. Let's go over a pair of these show polished CNC cylinders. These start off as the MHP CNC Game Changer Cylinder. 
Really robust sleeve. Darton does the sleeves in these. These have the same amount of fins that come from the factory of Harley. We've taken the, the inner body, we've expanded it, we've taken the fins, we've expanded those out. It's the most robust, strongest sleeve we have on these bigger motors. So we start off with this guy. The reason we wanna show them is it starts off this thick. When we go through the process of the show polish, a lot of material is removed. And that's why we don't start with a factory cylinder. Because a lot of guys say, hey, I want to go with the factory cylinder. Well, we're taking so much meat off, it, it's stronger to have this billet piece be a little bit thinner than have that cast piece be thinner. And the number one thing when a cylinder is being polished and that material is being removed is you, you want them perfectly straight. Because if you mess up and take a little too much off, you'll see the waves in there. And uh, the team that does that for us is impeccable. We hope those guys are doing it forever because it is just a beautiful finish on that cylinder. Now, if you're gonna be putting this on your bike, a little upkeep. If you've ever had polished rims on a car back in the 90s, early 2000s, when everyone's running um, polished aluminum center lines and we didn't have all these new coatings we have now, you're taking the mothers out on the weekends and you're polishing your rim. So if you're gonna be running this guy, you know, a lot more upkeep than if you're running a black cylinder. But if you want that showstopper, they are showstoppers. And then the head, of course. So we start with a stock Harley Davidson head. This is a pair of our race heads, and this is what they look like stock. So then just like the cylinder, a lot of material is being removed off the fins. And how heat works on an air-cooled engine is it moves from the fattest part to the thinnest part. So actually making it thinner out here allows the heat to travel faster to the tip of it and dissipate off the tip quicker which is actually something that helps. Now you're, you're making it smoother. So there's an argument of, hey, you're, you're polishing, so you're laying down the material and making it denser. Well, yeah, that does um, affect how much heat it dissipates by a little bit, but also tapering them to a thinner point helps speed up the heat transfer. So with both of them, you're probably back to how you are stock, possibly even better. And these are setups when we are doing a polished motor setup compared to the regular Harley setup, it's a little bit longer and a couple different reasons. If we are getting your cylinders made, we gotta send them off to be polished, we don't do them in house. If you buy this for your bike and we're just doing the case bore, as soon as your case is ready, we can build your bike. Um, this has another step and we normally don't always have these guys in stock ready to rock. We usually send them out to be polished when you say, hey, I want to do that on my bike. So a little bit more lead time on the polish setups. But if you want a show bike, it's worth the extra weight. Thunderheader, one of the best sounding pipes out there on the M8. It's when they're built. Awesome setup. It dresses up the motor really well. The chrome covers, you know, the black ones are a little more finicky, a little more touchy. The chrome covers can handle more abuse. You can clean them a little easier. Uh, black is awesome on these bikes, but when we get a deck one out like this and chrome it out, they are good looking bikes. Let's talk about the Dynograph on this bike. Now this chromed out fat tire kit, the bike looks stunning, but the graph really sacrifices. Here's us throwing over what a normal 135 Devil Runner Moonshine Horsepower engine does. You know, this one's 171 horsepower, 160 foot pounds of torque, and that's with a stock wheel and a stock tire. Throwing the heavy tire, you can see we only made 162.5 horsepower. That extra weight, the motor is straining a little bit more to turn it because there's more mass in it. It's heavier back there. So not only does it take away the torque some, it takes away horsepower. So torque on a stock wheel at 26, 2700 RPMs, you're at about 145 foot pounds of torque. At 27, this one, you're at 135. So that's a 10 foot pound torque loss due to the extra weight and mass back there of that wheel wheel. The graph though, is still super smooth and a lot of power. So having that rear wheel, you need the extra cubes to make the power and you're gonna have a ton of power, but it's not as good as if you're on a carbon fiber rim or something else. So just wanna address how the wheel choice that you're putting on 
your Harley Davidson makes a difference in the feel of how the bike rides and the power it puts to the ground. All right, let's remove the one with the stock wheel and just talk about this graph. So the red one here, it, it's just a nice smooth graph, really well tuned. That Ward 550 camshaft does a great job and she's throwing down 160 plus horsepower. Nothing to, to laugh about here. A impressive graph out of this setup, but we just wanted to go over the differences for when you guys are choosing a wheel for your build, what to expect in case you get a heavy one. Uh, something else that really kills a dyno is those CVOs with that cast rear rim and the, the spokes on it. Those guys do about the same thing on one of these 135 builds as this does. It's about a 10 horse loss on that really cool looking spoke CVO rim that come on some of the CVO roguelides. So let's go over the final numbers. The torque number ended up being 148.25 foot pounds at 4,700 RPMs. Max power, 162.5 at 6,400 RPMs. Smooth, great looking graph. Sacrifice some numbers for the heavy wheel wheel but overall, very impressive. Uh, we're here today with Ricky. Ricky is uh, picking up his 2022 Road Glide. Uh, spent some time on the road. It's uh, been a little bit of a haul for him. Actually, the whole project took us quite a while. This was, uh, what, about a 10, 11 month project, I think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, today is the first day he's coming in to actually see the final product when we're done with it. And um, Ricky, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, okay. What are your thoughts, man? Well, um, I love it, first off. I can't wait to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish but, I could say I've had a chance to ride it, but I haven't. It's been yeah. too cold and icy and all that out here. So so what I what I had done, I'd done a bunch of looking on the on the internet and I found a bike that I really liked and so called Aaron and got with him and just sent him, emailed him a picture of what I wanted the build to kind of look like. Yeah, and that was interesting. The whole genesis of the project was a photo it was one photo one photo <laughs> and <laughs> all that yeah he pointed to things that he liked like what specifically do you like about this bike and it was the the stance the wheels and most importantly just like chrome yeah chrome everywhere like so chrome and black we went to some pretty extensive lengths to get this thing as uh, as shiny as it can possibly be uh jamie covered a lot of the specs you know about the the, the technical aspect of what went into this, but it's got a stout power plant in it, and uh, it's got the suspension and the bars and everything to match. It's it's just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the experience of how the build went for you and what the experience is like from top to bottom. From top to bottom, uh, man, I couldn't find nobody better to work with, really. <laughs> Thank you. Just, it was great. Uh, yeah, you've been a pleasure. And you know, like one nice thing too is you always had like a uh, a picture in your mind of what the final product was supposed to be and you gave me really good feedback about the direction that we were going. It was not a whole lot of second guessing. So yeah. it, uh, you know, having that, that direction made it a pleasure. Right, yeah. So I wanted a spoke wheel. Mm -hmm. and, and That was Aaron, a trick. Yeah, that was a trick because Aaron talked me out of that. I, I didn't really realize exactly how much power the bike had. And Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, he had the idea uh, to he wanted a spoke look, but we didn't feel it was going to be really safe right. to put this yeah. kind of power down on a, especially a straight laced wheel. Yeah. So we did some searching and looking and found SMT and they provided us with these really gorgeous wheels. Yeah, the wheels and the big tires are going to take away a little bit from the performance. It but. did, they're heavy. Yeah, um, they're heavy, heavy, but you got to have it with this kind of, with this kind of horsepower. Yeah, for sure. So it came, uh, I guess to kind of digress a little bit. Uh, my son's a nut about motorcycles. He rides a street light. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about who we could get to do a build like this. And and uh, so I just started looking around and, and y'all were the ones. That How'd you find us? Um, through the internet. Yeah. And my son was familiar and we started talking about it. Yeah. Just started Googling stuff on it. And he had some good suggestions too. We got the NVS audio on this and I was really pleased with how that turned out. Yeah. It was our first time installing one of those and man, as advertised, sounds great. The kit went together very well. You know, Roy, our technician plug, said it was plug plug, smooth. Yeah. yeah, really smooth. And it's got some really nice, like, you know, advanced features with the, the digital signal processing and all that kind of stuff in it. It's, it's like a really clean setup. Yeah. This bike has a custom dynamics uh, light kit on it. Um, we wired it, Roy wired it. He's the, the wiring genius. Um, it's got wheel lights, over the motor lights, under lights, 
and they're all separately programmable. So you can split colors, you can make them do different things to different areas of the bike. It's really, really neat. It's all run through your Bluetooth uh, on your phone. <laughs> it's like thunder and lightning going off with it. Yeah, exactly. What's really neat too about this setup is you can program it for safety. When you hit the brakes, no matter what color you're on, it'll go red to red. let everybody know you're trying to stop. Yeah. And you can uh, toggle that on and off as yeah. well, which is kind of a neat right. feature. Yeah. yeah, man, Ricky, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Anytime you need anything, holler at me, man. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yes, sir. Enjoy. I'm going to let you enjoy it. Yeah, I really do. <laughs> That's the Moonshine Harley Davidson, Moonshine Horsepower, Chrome Fatty Breakdown, super cool bike. I got another one we're gonna be doing a bike build video after this one. Thank you for all the support. If you could, throw some comments in there. If there's more stuff you wanna see, a little different take on the videos we are doing, let us know. We like the feedback and we appreciate all your support.